Well, good morning. I was just getting my stuff set up in the tractor, wasn't ready to film or go yet. And somebody decided that they wanted to ride with me. Pepper, what are you doing in here? I think she just wants to sit on my lap. She loves spending time with me. Well, from me and Pepper, good morning, you guys. Let's go drive the tractor. Pepper, I would love to have you in here with me, but I don't think you're going to like it very much. Come on. Off you go. Sorry. When she walks away, she kind of looks like a skunk. I mean that as a compliment, Pepper. <laughs> See you later. And away she goes to catch some mice. All right, let's get this thing fired up. <laughs> Making sure I have eyes on Pepper. She likes to be close to me. So I sent Grant out there to keep an eye on her. But I am just going to lift my implement up here. You can really feel how heavy it is. Up it goes. Don't need the shade because the sun is not really out today. And away we go. As I was driving, I was just thinking that this is my this is my commute to work. I'm driving out to the field, but this is my commute view. It's not the prettiest day, I'll be honest. Nebraska is a lot better when things are green, when there's things growing in the fields. But man, what a view, huh? Just driving to work. Made it out to the field and I was just thinking, what a commute. I did not see another person or a vehicle on the road. The only person is about a, a mile away. There is a neighbor who's strip tilling his field. <laughs> That's just crazy. So while I was driving, I put my flashers on just to warn potential people driving down the road that I would be coming. So I'm gonna turn those off and then I'm also going to unfold. So I'm just using my number one hydraulic, which is right here. And there we go. Out they fold. This is a 16 row Orthman stock puller, I believe is the official name, SP5, but I like to call this thing or the root slicer. And everybody makes fun of me for the way they say root. Root? Root slicing? Root slicing, sounds way better. Like roof, roof, root. I don't know, I guess you can make fun of me if you want. They are both all the way out and now I'm going to like lock that down. Now it's in float. So it's going to be trying to push them down and like keep those wings down, but they can move up if need be because there's a lot of draws in this field. So I don't want my bar to be completely rigid. I want those sides to be able to go up if need be. So this field has been road sized before once already but I'm going to get out and just see which direction it's been red sliced. And then I'm going to go opposite that way against the whole field because this is gonna be our second time doing this field. So I just wanna make sure we have the perfect planting place for our seeds in a couple weeks. Just prepping that seed bed. We have our auto steer line already populated, already pulled up. Um, auto steer line is this white line right here where that little green tractor is sitting right there. So all I have to do you start pulling ahead and press this oh, press this button first then this button and then you see we are only four inches off from the line and it will just line us up as we're going now I'm just backing up to get right into place it was perfect because when Gage did it he worked the field this way now I'm going to work the field back this way and this is a field that we farm on the old rows. So we are going directly over where we planted last year and that is going to be where we plant this year. Just gonna get ready, oyster line is locked in and I'm going to approach it, put my implement down and get up to speed. I could tell which way they were going because of the way that the stalks were lying Right now in this row, they're all facing me, so we're pushing them the other direction. Here we go. 
Last summer was super dry, um, but we do have pivots. So we can irrigate our crops, but our fields are square and our pivots are circle. So on most of our fields, there's these little corners that don't get watered by the pivot. And you can, we call that dry land um, for obvious reasons, it's dry land. But you can really tell where the dry land is because there's so much less plant material. Corn just couldn't really grow there this summer. It was just so hot, conditions were so bad. But as soon as you get into the irrigated stuff, there's so much more plant material that we're chopping through. I don't know if it's as obvious on camera, but here, this is a dry land corner, and then look right there. Immediately the plant material picks back up. Look at that beautiful path left behind us. Perfect to plant into. I've already busted into my snack supply for the day. Watermelon, carrot, carrot oranges, blueberries, and raspberries. It's been a while since we've done the snacks that I have in the tractor cab with me. That used to be a regular segment on the channel. Um, another thing I have with me is this lemon caramel jumbo muffin, which we found the recipe online last night and made it, and it is delicious. It's been a long while since I have done my mascara in the tractor cab. Do I still have what it takes? We are going over, we're going 10 and a half miles an hour right now bumping through the field. I think I still have it, folks. This has taken years of practice, trial and error, and lots of times where I poke myself in the eyeball. I still have it. We've come to kind of a weird spot in the field. So this is like a big drainage tube. So this field has some rolling hills, as you can see. So this provides a spot for water to go. So there's another pipe up there and water can drain down into this tube instead of washing away our crops up there. Very important to be paying attention. You would not want to run the tractor into that. Also very, very important to remember to pick your implement up before you back up. Those discs that are back there would just ram right into the ground and we just really don't want that to happen. I finished the corn field and I'm now moved on to a soybean field. That's why it looks so different behind me. And so I've been going ever since that far end of the field and just stopping every once in a while and making little adjustments because obviously I want things set differently for soybean stubble than I do corn stubble. There's a lot less organic material out here just because a, store, a soybean plant is so much less of a plant than a corn plant is. We're not going as deep, so my implement is pitched a lot more up. And I think I have it set where I like it. And so now we can get going. You might think that farming would get boring because it's such a cyclical process. Every year, in theory, is exactly the same. You plant, you water, you harvest, you fix, you prep, you plant, you water, you harvest, over and over and over. But I think it's such a nice thing to know what's coming up next in the sense that every single day is different. I don't know what's going to break. I don't know what the weather's going to be like, but I do know that this time next year, I'm probably going to be sitting in a rut slicer. But I also love that we're working the same ground year after year because I'm going through the field and I remember specific moments of planting or irrigating or harvest at this specific point in the field. So I'm driving along and I remember that the combine broke down like right around here this time last year and uh, there was some spilled soybeans and Gage and I were picking them up and we we're joking with Grant and we we're kind of bummed because the combine was broken down but we we're having so much fun as a group. I like feeling so connected to the land that I'm working. Bad news folks, you see this gauge right here? The left side is fuel and the right side, the one that's blinking, that is my diesel exhaust fluid. Hindsight, maybe I should have filled up before I came out to the field. Um, right now we are averaging averaging 10 acres an hour. So when we're actually going through the field, we could be accomplishing at the speed we're going like 40 or 50 acres an hour. But when you account for the time where I'm slowing down through draws or the time it takes to slow down and turn around and reassess that kind of thing, uh, more like 10 acres an hour is a much more accurate depiction of what we're actually doing. Um, but right now we are burning, I need to look at my fuel. We are burning about 11 gallons of fuel an hour. And my average speed, 
probably above eight miles an hour if you account for the turning around and slowing down. But I called Grant and he's going to bring me out lunch to the field anyways. And so I'm just going to have him bring the fuel trailer out so I don't have to drive home. I can keep going because I still have some time left before we're totally out of fuel. So he's gonna bring that out and we will do a mobile fill up. Grant brought me out a delicious lunch. Some leftover stir fry noodle type things with an egg roll and a kickstart. So there is not quite enough fuel to keep going in the trailer. We really need to work these kinks out before planting season, but that's actually okay because a friend called and is in need of some help of some big equipment. And it just so happens that I have some big equipment. So we're gonna go home. Ooh, it's so windy out there. We're actually going to unhook the rut slicer and we're going to be hooking up to a big pivot moving crane. And I think we're going to be unloading a shipping container for him. Chief is a family-owned, Nebraska-based company comprised of seven diverse brands. Chief. Trusted. Tested. True. So instead of the 8345R that we are in this morning, we are in the 8335 and we are going to be hooking it up to this crane. Now historically we've used this to move pivot spans. I've never moved anything else with it, but I think it'll work really well for our job this afternoon. Went out to get my camera stand and look what I found. I think this is the bottom of an old shoe. That's definitely the bottom of an old shoe. What? Does this have nails on it? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Weird, right? You never know what you're gonna find around the farm. As I said before, we really don't do a lot of tillage on our farm. We're kind of like a modified ridge till is what we like to call it. But that doesn't mean that I do not admire some big horsepower and a big disc turning up the dirt. That is, that is a beautiful sight right there, folks. Wow, so cool. Got the tractor over here safely. And this is what we are removing from the trailer. I don't know if I've really seen a shipping container up close. They are so much bigger than they look on screen. Wow. I understand why this couldn't be moved with just like a forklift or something. Seeing the scale of this makes me think about, you know, like the big barges that bring shipping containers across the ocean. Those things must be enormous. The plan is to adjust things so we can have the tractor lifting on the front, telehandler lifting from the back, and then once we get it up in the air, we're just going to like drive the trailer out from under it and set it down. Have you guys ever seen those videos where people like bury shipping containers and make bunkers out of them or 
like paint them and put siding on them and make them houses. I didn't really understand that until now. I can see how that's possible. It's massive. What do we think of this Peterbilt? A little bit nicer than mine, huh? The plan is to get some chains up there and get a chain on each corner. Same with the telehandler. These are some thick straps. Check this out. There's like electrical lights in here. I think it's gonna be a little workshop. That's perfect. We've got Gage up there hooking us up. Never really done anything like this before, so we'll see how this works. <laughs> Gage goes, catch me. Don't jump. You ready? All right, she's airborne. Okay, come down. Okay, Laura, slow down. Gage, go faster. Okay, Laura, down. Okay, Laura, down. There we go. I think so. It's pretty square with the building. Yeah, the old uh, farm crane comes in handy once again. Amazing, your service. Well, folks, there you have it. Shipping and moving services. This old girl isn't just used for pivot spans. I'm really thinking we need to uh, beef this thing up. Might have another job. So post container moving, Grant just so happens to look over and see two old tractors, Farm All M and a Farm All H. And you guys know Grant, right? You know what he says? How much for everything? Are we coming home with two red tractors? So this one runs or starts allegedly, but it's out of gas. It's got a can of starting fluid sitting on it. So that's a bit concerning. And then the H has a bad radiator on it and also a rusted out gas tank, but they have new parts for it and also new-ish tires, because these ones are pretty weathered. I suppose our friends at Titan could probably help us out with those though. Oh boy. I don't know, guys. I think these things are so cool. So beefy. All right, folks, that is it for today. Let me know what you think. Should we buy those old tractors? Do we need two red ones to go along with our fleet of John Deere tractors. Let me know. But uh, for now, signing off, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.